Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be reviewing the brand new Natasha Denona Chromium Liquid Eyeshadows. These are her newest release. So if you want to hear my thoughts on these, I give you some tips as to what I think are the best ways to use these and how I got this look. So let's just get into it. <laughs> So the Chromium Liquid Eyeshadows are currently available right now at Beautylish, Sephora, and Natasha Denona. So I will be sure to put the links down below for you guys, but I was really excited about this release. Multichromes is the new and exciting thing in the industry. For a while, you know, it was like glitter shadows, and then we got into duochromes, and now multichromes, I think, are the new thing in the industry. Now, of course, I do know indie brands have had multichromes for a while. That is their territory, so it will be interesting to see what these mainstream makeup brands do with these. I think one of the first mainstream dives or the one that's really popular in at least my circle of makeup was Pat McGrath put a multi-chrome in her palette and now we have these liquid multi-chromes from Natasha. One thing that I have noticed is every single brand that does multi-chromes, I feel like it's all the same multi-chrome shades. There must be some type of formulation where only certain multi-chrome shades are able to be made. I don't know anything about making cosmetics cosmetics, but it's, that's just what they seem because there's a lot of similar multi and duo chromes. So taking a look at the website right now, these do say limited edition. I don't know how accurate that is. Usually you can't trust whether it says limited edition or not, but yes, currently these are limited edition. These are $28, which is quite pricey for a singular liquid eyeshadow in my opinion, but you know, it's Natasha Denona. That's kind of what you come to expect. And she has five shades of available. Now I did only purchase three shades. The price of these obviously if you buy more than one are going to rack up quite quickly so I resisted and only got three and not the whole line. So online these are described as a shadow that features a jelly texture with a fresh hydrating feel and creates a multi-chrome finish with color shift at different angles of light reflection. So if you don't know what a multi-chrome is basically depending on what angle the light is hitting it it's going to show you a different color and a duochrome is just two shades. A multi-chrome has more than a two shade shift. The two colors that I did not get were Dogbane, which is a red, orange, and gold metallic shift. This one looked like one of the most intense multi-chrome shifts. For me, the colors red, green, and blue, I, I didn't know about that. I thought that was a bit too intense for me. And then Infrared Nude, which I really wanted, but I had to hold back. This one is a gold, yellow, red, and pink metallic shift. I'm gonna get into the colors that I purchased. Before I get into that, I do wanna talk about the consistency of these. These are kind of like jelly, not super sticky jelly, but they're a thicker consistency. They're not watery, and these do apply and swatch very easily. I do want to show you really quickly just so you can see how we do with the singular swatch. Very easy, and just with the way that the light hits, it does have a lot of opacity. Now, I will warn, it's because of the way that the light's hitting that this does look like it's full of pigment, and it is, but once you get it on the lid, you will see that sometimes it can get a touch patchy or just not as as thick and opaque as it may swatch on the hand. So just be aware of that. And one thing that I also don't like about multi-chromes is it looks very different on the eyes than it does say in a swatch just because your eyelid is not flat like the back of your hand. Depending on the way the light's hitting on it, different colors are going to show up. That can also make you believe it's a bit patchy when it's not. Or like I said, you have to be careful about what shift colors you purchase because some just aren't as flattering. Now that's my personal opinion, but like for me, one thing that I feared with the Dogbane shade is just because of the color shifts that are in there, that it might be a bit unflattering or murky looking on the eyelid. So that's why I didn't purchase that one. But that being said, multi-chromes are really cool. I'm excited to see them hitting the mainstream market. So they are going to come in these boxes right here. They do kind of have that duochrome shift to it. And as far as the packaging, these are gorgeous. And this is where you're going to be able to see the strongest shifts that they'll have. It's easy to see when they're in their components what colors you're getting. And the caps are gorgeous. They have the duochrome that is supposed to be inside in the product. Important things to be aware of. These are made in Italy. They have a six month shelf life, which is not very long, but typically that's how it is with liquid shadows. And something else that you you might need to know is these have 2.5 milliliters of product 
which is not a lot. So I just wanted to compare for you guys. Like these are $28 and they are tiny. Here is a regular Stila liquid shadow. Do you see how these, how tiny these are? And we've complained that these, I believe at what, like $20 are expensive. These are 28 and this has 4.5 milliliters of product. So this has 2.5, 4.5. There's significantly more product in this. This is more affordable. And now of course Stila doesn't have the multi-chrome formula, but as far as value, you get a significantly smaller amount of product and it's quite pricey. So that might be something just to keep in mind, or maybe I would say, don't pick up all of them because they're a lot of money and they're gonna add up and they're not gonna last you the longest time. But I don't know, maybe just get one because they are limited edition. Anyways, I'm gonna get into the color specifically that I purchased. The first one that I have is Dragonfly. This one has a purple, gold, and orange metallic. I didn't personally see too much of the purple. I saw more so orange and gold, but again, it just depends what light you're hitting. It might look completely different outside than it does underneath my studio lights. It is hard for me to show you the true shift just behind the studio lights. Dragonfly is very pretty. I think of the ones that I purchased, it's probably the most wearable, and I'm using that term loosely because multichromes aren't exactly what I would consider like neutral or everyday friendly, but this one is really pretty. I would say just be careful with the application as far as like blending it out with your finger because of the gold shift sometimes it can look a little bit patchy. Um, the next shade that I have is ultraviolet. This is a violet purple and green metallic. Now I got this shade specifically because it reminded me of this extraterrestrial multi-chrome shade in the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 palette so I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison for you guys on that. I don't love this one. I don't love the green shift that it has because I find it to look a little bit murky and unflattering so this isn't my favorite color. I think on the arm it's my favorite color but on my eye I find it to be very unflattering. I am quickly going to swatch the multi-chrome in the Pat McGrath palette for you. And yeah they have the same shifts. So right here is the Pat McGrath which is obviously a powder formula. This one's liquid so it's a bit more chrome but you can see the shifts are very very similar. So I would say personally if you have the Divine Rose 2, I think you can skip on the ultraviolet shade. Now, if you d wanted the extraterrestrial terrestrial shade from the Pat McGrath palette, but you didn't want to spend all of the money on the Pat McGrath palette, this is a really good opportunity not to spend the money on the whole palette and just get that singular shade. Obviously, complete different format here. I do think that the Pat McGrath is a bit more subtle. I think it's a little easier to work with being a powder, but this one is a lot more chromatic. And the last shade that I got, I had to get, this is the shade Scarab. This is a gold, blue, and yellow metallic shift. I got this one because I felt like it was the most unique out of all of them. I feel like all of them kind of had like an orange, red, gold type of shift. This one I felt was different because it had such a strong blue shift to it. This one by far, by swatching, is easily the most pigmented, like right away as you put it onto the eye or you swatch the hand. I just noticed instant pigmentation from it. Of the ones that I have, this one is definitely the most fun. So one thing that I noticed when swatching them kind of on my plain eye is that, like I said, they could look patchy. I wouldn't suggest spending too much time patting out the color because that's going to take away from the opacity unless you really want that slight soft shift. In that case, if you want that soft shift, that's fine, but I would suggest having a base color like an eyeshadow underneath so that that color can shine through. Be careful about layering these. Now I don't notice these having the texture where it would get cracky or crumbly on the eye. These actually don't seem to build up that way which is very nice. There's no flaking happening here. When it comes to your eyes because there's a lot of folds and creases it's best to apply as little product as possible to prevent that from happening. For me you'll see in my tutorial of this look I tell you how I layered it and gave you my tips as to how I did that so just stay tuned for that. You could totally get a cut crease with these, which is very cool though. If you use it straight from the applicator, the applicator is kind of flat. So it allows you to create whatever shape that you want. Look. I recommend pairing these with a base shadow or shadows underneath. And also depending on the base shade that you put underneath, you can make the color of the shift that you like the most shine through the most. So take a look. So I did kind of want to show you what 
a base color does and all I did was I picked three different matte shades from the Safari palette so you'll see for Scarab here is the color alone here is it under the navy shade that I use and it just makes this color much stronger it makes the duochrome shift much more visible you can also use black for all of these black would be a really cool base but if you want to play with the tones that already exist in the color that could play it up like this had a blue shift so I put a navy ultraviolet I tried to find kind of a violet color and you can see it really brought out the violet tones in here and then for dragonfly you can use like a red I used a warm tone deep orange and again it just really changes it up makes the color look a little bit stronger and I think will really help you complete a look if you layer these so as you can see that really changed how these were looking depending on what base color you use it will change it up more than other shadows but for the most part I think you're going to benefit from pairing these with other shadows so I'm going to take you into how I did this look I obviously used scarab and I'm going to show you what layering and mixing with powder shadows did so I'm going to show you how I created this look just to kind of get the most out of the shadows my tips and tricks on how I would apply it so I'm just digging into my safari palette from Natasha Denona and we're going to start off with the shade tamarind this has has some coolness to it that's going to work well with the blue we're gonna put down so I'm just going to apply this all over the crease today. now I'm gonna use the scarab chromium color today so I wanted to do a navy so the scarab shade has a little bit of a blue to it so I wanted to have a blue base to it and why I like a navy is because it's not quite black you can definitely do a black for something more dramatic but I think a navy is a nice happy medium to having the blue peak out but it's still being really deep to add some intensity to the eye. I'm also going to apply that on the lower lash line as well. Now let's get into the good stuff. So I'm just going to apply it straight from the applicator and this shade of the three that I have is definitely the most pigmented but especially over over this base it really is gonna show through the most so I'm just painting that on just me I like to blend now with this particular formula it does kind of lose some opacity and I feel like can look a little bit patchy so just be sparing and very light-handed with your finger blending honestly I just like to finger blend it to kind of spread it out and also especially up here I like to blend it up here and then I go in with a very very light second layer because you don't want to have too much you don't want it to have a reason to get really creasy you just kind of go over with a very thin layer just to solidify that color and I'm actually going to use a brush and I'm gonna run this on my lower lash line as well so I'm using the BK Beauty 207 brush I'm just gonna get some color right from the applicator and I'm just gonna run that right on top just because this is the easiest way of application I don't love applying this with the brush but precision wise this is what's going to be the best option and I mean that's all I'm doing for the look I think I'm gonna go in with maybe a touch more of the navy and just pop that right in the outer corner and this will add some fun depth to the look as well and as you can see I'm just using a touch but it is kind of playing up that duochrome so you can layer some powder over it as well that's actually really cool looking I'm gonna do that over here too all right and that's it for the look all right you guys so that is all I have to say as far as these go so far so good I'm really liking these I like the payoff that you get with these I like that they aren't flaky now Natasha Denona did previously have another liquid formula I believe it was called the chroma liquid eyeshadows I think she's getting rid of those those are on sale for like 50% off on Sephora those were just metallic shades they weren't dual chromes they weren't multi chromes I personally never owned any of those so unfortunately I cannot compare the formula for you but these are really nice I don't notice any flakiness or building up or chunkiness I like the pigmentation that you get in here I really like how they pair with powder shadows there was no weird reaction when I put a powder shadow on top or underneath do I think these are a necessity no I also don't think 
they're probably the most practical unless you really love multi-chrome shadows and I, sometimes I have some multi-chrome shadows in my collection I think it's a little bit easier with the powder formulas but what is good about these as compared to powder formulas is these are a little bit less messy some multi-chrome formulas I noticed aren't as smooth or are a little flaky these are less messy in that regard but that's just some of the formulas that I've tried but I really like these and if you love the idea of a multi-chrome I would suggest picking up at least one they're really fun they're really great quality what I'm gonna do before I sign off is I'm going to do a check-in with you guys at about a six or seven hour mark so I can share with you if I notice any creasing or anything because wear time on these are an important factor and that will kind of solidify whether or not I recommend these to you but as of now first application these are a really fun item all right you guys so we are at the eight hour point so it's a little bit later so my eyes are a little bit red so I'm tired but I did want to update you on how this wore and honestly it held up very very well there's little to like no creasing I would say right here maybe it looks a little bit not chunky or flaky but it does look like it's been through a long day so I would say not to over apply the product but for the most part it's held up very well and very happy with the wear time on this so I think that closes this video up for today I wore well and I think the product itself is pretty nice quality once you get used to using it and knowing how to use it the one disappointment I had with this product was I felt like it just didn't quite look on the eye what it did on the hand or in the swatches or on Natasha's profile but there's definitely ways to make it work and it's a beautiful product when paired with the right products so I recommend it I don't recommend buying the whole collection or anything but if there's a color or two that you find interesting and you want to play around with I definitely think it's worth a try so that's all I have for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so it would make my day and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one